Hello and welcome to Krishi Jagran business platform that keeps you updated with all the agri news of the nation. This is Yash Saxena. Let's take a quick look at the top headlines of the day. Top shots from the agriculture world to attend the launch of Krishi Jagran's special edition on millets in New Delhi to celebrate 2023 as the International Year of Millets. President Draupadi Murmu graces the 17th Pravasi Bharatiya Devas Convention. Government names 27 overseas Indians for Pravasi Bharatiya Samman Awards. AG Matrix announces international training camp workshop on agri tech and innovations. Atal. Union Agri Minister addresses international Suflam Prithvi Tatva seminar. Highlights importance of livestock in organic farming. Krishi Jagran organizes 16th Hindi training session of the farmer, the journalist. Amul MD RSOD resigns. JN Mehta takes interim charge. Senior care startup Atulya raises 77 crore rupees from Morgan Stanley India Infrastructure. UP government plans to digitize agriculture sector will connect land records to satellites. Bihar's food grain production touches new high, records 5 lakh metric tons more than previous fiscal year. Haryana Agri Minister takes a shot on government officers, says more complaints means officers are not doing their jobs. Tamil Nadu CM distributes Pongal gift worth 2,429 crore rupees. Coimbatore industrialist launches a body to help millet farmers. Manipal Academy of Higher Education Bengaluru hosts marathon to raise funds for cancer treatment of unprivileged children. Kenya to host 6th edition of Africa Agri Expo in February 2023. BS3 and BS4 vehicles banned from Tuesday to Friday as air quality worsens in Delhi. Now the news in detail. Well, millets is the buzzword these days. To celebrate the International Year of Millets 2023, Krishi Jagaran is all set to unveil its special edition on millets this Thursday. Krishi Jagaran, known for some of its best agri initiatives, is celebrating the International Year of Millets 2023 at its headquarters in New Delhi. Also, Purushottam Rupala, Union Minister of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying of India will mark the presence at the unveiling ceremony. Ashok Dalbia, CEO of National Rainfed Area Authority, Ganesh Joshi, Minister of Soldiers, Welfare, Agriculture and Rural Development of Uttarakhand, with other agri top shots from the industry, will attend the event. The Indian government notified millet as a nutritious cereal in April 2018 and millet was also included in the Potion Mission campaign. But recently, the United Nations has declared 2023 as the International Year of Millets and the world could be seen celebrating these golden grains. The President of India, Draupadi Murmu, graced the valedictory session of the 17th Pravasi Bharatiya Devas Convention and confer Pravasi Bharatiya Samman Awards today at Indore. According to the government release, 27 NRIs are selected from various fields across the globe for the Pravasi Bharatiya Samman Awards. The recipients were chosen by a jury come award committee chaired by the Vice President of the Nation. External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar is the Vice Chair of the panel, who's other members are drawn from various walks of life. The committee considered nomination for the Pravasi Bharti Samman Awards and unanimously selected the awardees. This year, theme for the Pravasi Bharti Divas 2023 is Diaspora, Reliable Partners for India's Progress in Amrit Kal. This theme highlights the importance of the Indian diaspora in contributing to India's progress. The event was also attended by the President of the Republic of Suriname, Mr. Chandrika Prasad Santokhi and the President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Dr. Mohammad Irfan Ali, will call on the Presidents at the event. The 15-day online training course come workshop by AG Matrix in association with the VNMKV Prabhani and MPKV Rahuri has announced Agri Technology Advances Learning Atal program will commence from February 18th this year. This program is curated by top industry veterans and academic experts. The major highlights of the program include 45 plus top industry stalwarts as guest speakers, top administrators and academic heads for career guidance, daily sessions by national and international speakers, a total of 50 plus hours of online course videos, live sessions, impactful certification by NAHEP in demand skills and expertise in the ever-changing world. Working professionals, extension workers, progressive farmers, as well as FPC directors are eligible to apply for the courses. 
Recently, while addressing the international seminar on the Sufalam Prithvi Tattva Union Minister of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, Narendra Singh Tomar said that now is the time when the government and society should come to work together in order to stop the negative impacts on the soil and planet Earth. The Institute of Agriculture Science, Banaras Hindu University, Bahurao Devras Trust, Bharti Kisan Sangh and Akshay Krishi Parivar collaborated to host Sufalam Prithvi Tattva on Sunday in the Shatabdi Auditorium at the BHU campus. He further said that it is true that the country produces an abundance of food grains now, but we also need to improve ourselves so that the future is secure and there is harmony with nature. According to Tomer, who also stated that PM Modi is directing the nation towards natural farming, livestock plays a crucial role in organic farming. Krishi Jagran has always been solving the problems of the farmers of the country through its platform. In this episode, Krishi Jagran has started Farmer the Journalist. Under this, the farmer are working to play the role of journalist farmers by taking the news related to the agriculture of their area to the country and the world through Krishi Jagran's platform. Krishi Jagran's team organized a 16th training session in Hindi language for the 34th batch at 11 am today. Now more than 200 farmers have joined FTJ and it is our effort that in the same way we connect with new farmers of every state and make them aware of journalism. Yesterday, the board of directors of Afmool Marketer, Gujarat Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation asked the incumbent managing director Rupendra Singh Sodhi to resign with immediate effect and hand over the reins to Jain Mehta, the dairy major's chief operating officer. The federation's board of directors, which includes the chairman of 18 Gujarat dairy unions, convened an unscheduled meeting on Monday and resolved to terminate Sodhi's services as managing director of the federation with immediate effect. Till now, the board has not provided any justification for its decision. Sodi has been in charge for the last 10 years at Amul and under his leadership, the brand revenue increased more than 7 folds from 8,005 crore rupees in 2009 to 10 to rupees 61,000 crores in the past year. Atholya Senior Care has got 77 crore rupees from a fund managed by Morgan Stanley India Infrastructure, making the deal one of the largest fundraising in the sector. Atholya offers assisted living, transition care and home health care for dependent seniors older than 60 and will use the money from North Haven India Infrastructure Partners for expansion. The company which was founded in 2016, it manages more than 400 assisted living beds at facilities in Chennai and Bengaluru and has cumulatively served over 20,000 seniors. With the funding, Atulia plans to expand services across South India by having some 2,500 beds and serving 50,000 seniors in the next two years. The company will launch palliative care services. According to the company, India needs 3 lakh senior living units and the supply is 20,000 units. Under a notable initiative, the Yogi Adityanath government is close to finishing the digitalization of agricultural land records in the state. Currently, estimations made at the district levels are used by the Agricultural and Revenue Department to collect statistics on the agriculture. Further, the UPI administration plans to connect the digital records of the land to the satellite network. The Ministry of Agriculture in Uttar Pradesh confirmed the information stating that the department will soon assemble a high-level committee that would go to the different states to research various facades of the digitalization of agricultural land records. It is anticipated that the technology will soon be operational in the state, allowing the authorities to obtain accurate information on the crop pattern and implement the necessary steps to raise farmers' revenue. According to the final report on food grain output for the previous year, Bihar's production of food grain has been recorded at 184 lakh metric tons in 2021-22, an increase of 5 lakh metric tons from the year 2020-2021. As per the most recent data on food grain production for the years 2021 and 2022, Bihar produced 77.17 lakh metric tons of rice and 68.89 lakh metric tons of wheat in the Kharif and Rabi seasons. The concerned government authorities are seeing these figures as encouraging, assuming they will help with food security. The achievement is credited to increased seed distribution, enough rainfall in 21 and 22 and other efforts to assist farmers in expanding their cultivation areas for the increase in food grain production. If more people are approaching with complaints, it means 
ऑफिसर्स आर नॉट वर्किंग प्रॉपरली सेज हरियाणा एग्रीकल्चर मिनिस्टर जय प्रकाश दलाल गिविंग गुड़गांव अथॉरिटीज अस्ट्रिंजिंग रिव्यू आफ्टर चेयरिंग द ग्रीवेंस फोरम ऑन मंडे द स्टेट मिनिस्टर रेफरिंग टू द नंबर ऑफ पीपल अटेंडिंग द डिस्ट्रिक्ट ग्रीवेंसेज कमिटी फोरम सेड द पब्लिक इज सुप्रीम इन अ डेमोक्रेसी एंड इट वॉज द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ एवरी गवर्नमेंट एजेंसी एंड द ऑफिशियल टू रिजॉल्व देयर कंसर्न Dalal who was given charge of the committee last September had converted the district grievances forum from a monthly closed door meeting to a darbar format allowing anyone to attend the meeting and raise an issue earlier the district administration used to select the complaints that would be placed before the forum monday's meeting held in civil lines included discussions on 16 complaints listed in the agenda of these 10 were resolved and the remaining 6 were left to be taken up at the next meeting which is yet to be scheduled Tamilnadu Chief Minister MK Stalin handed out Harvest Festival hampers to beneficiaries here on Monday to commemorate the launch of the Pongal gift distribution scheme across the state. Pongal is a harvest festival observed by the Tamil people. It is a festival to thank the sun, mother nature and the various farm animals who contribute to a bountiful harvest. Aside from the cash component, the gift pack includes raw rice and sugar, a full piece of sugar cane. as well as a dhoti and sari to all rice category family card holders and inmates of rehabilitation camps for sri lankan tamils 487.92 crore rupees has been set aside to implement the free dhoti and sari distribution scheme for pongal with the united nations declaring 2023 as the international year of millets a group of industrialists came together and launched the millet chamber of commerce and industry in the coimbatore on monday Addressing the reporters at the City Hotel on Avinashi Road on Monday, the chamber's president Mano Solomon said the body would strive to bring small farmers, industries and traders in millets under its aegis. The millet farmers remain unorganized. They sometimes use their produce as cattle feed when they fail to get a decent price in the market. D. Manivel, president of the National Institute of Research in Commercial Agriculture, said the institute will work closely with the body to give hand-in-hand -hand support to farmers, produce organization, and the companies who are into millet production and supply. He said millet has a minimal shelf life and it needs to be marketed soon to avoid going to waste. The 3K marketing run was held today at Manipal Academy of Higher Education Bengaluru as well as other campuses across India. The theme of this year's Manipal Marathon is Early Detection Saves Lives I Can Survive. The initiative is a significant effort to aid the fight against cancer among children. Dr. Raghavendra Prabhu, P Deputy Registrar of MAHE Bengaluru started off the 3K run on the campus in Bengaluru on Sunday. Nearly 50 to 60 individuals participated in the marathon. On February 12th the University of Manipal's Manipal campus will host the Manipal Marathon in collaboration with the Rotary Club of Manipal up to 60 lakh rupees is anticipated to be raised in total and the money will be used to aid and the money will be used to aid underprivileged children diagnosed with cancer as well as for cancer research Africa's fertile and tapped land and enormous underlying prospects have always paved the way for such events which connect the continent's agri business to the rest of the world. There has been a lot of excitement surrounding Africa's largest, most established and prominent agricultural show, the 6th Africa Agri Expo, which will take place next month on February 8th and 9th in, in KICC Nairobi, Kenya. Industry peers eagerly anticipate the two-day networking, knowledge sharing and brand building and thought-provoking platform The organizer Tab Group has officially confirmed endorsement by the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development Kenya with massive players like Sensa, a vehicle enterprise, ESRI, UAV.AI, Godrej Agrovet, OCP and many more. By transforming the sector to be more competitive, commercially oriented and responsive to the country's economic demands, the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development Kenya ensures complete food and nutrition security while improving the lives of rural Kenyans. With this Apex organization as an event endorsement partner several new changes to achieve long term development on the African continent will be facilitated throughout the event 
Amid the deteriorating air quality in the national capital, the Delhi government announced that it would no longer permit the movement of vehicles with BS3 petrol and BS4 diesel engines within the city from today onwards. Owing to unfavorable weather conditions, including winds and low temperatures, the city's air quality deteriorated to a severe level on Monday. As a result, the national capital region has been ordered by the Commission of Air Quality Management to enforce anti-pollution laws even more aggressively. Except for vehicles used in emergency services, police vehicles and government vehicles used for enforcement, there will be restrictions on the operation of BS3 petrol and BS4 diesel four-wheelers in the NCT of Delhi with immediate effect until January 12th or until downward revision of the GRAP stage, whichever comes first, read the statement released by the Transport Department of Delhi on Monday. So this was all about the news, let's take a look at today's quiz question. The question is on your screens. Which zone is the zone of least weathering? Option A, C horizon. Option B, B horizon. Option C, A horizon. Or option D, E horizon. You can reply to us via SMS on the number 8800023204. For more updates on Agri News, stay tuned with Krishi Jagran Business. This is Yash Saksena, signing off.